So there's been talks of intra-party warfare with respect to the GOP for quite some time now, but I haven't really seen it. And what I have seen, I think, has largely been overstated. I mean, certainly tensions exist between the Trump wing of the party and the TradCon wing of the party. That's that's obvious. But it's only now that I think these tensions are starting to kind of bubble up and reach the surface and become a lot more public, which is really interesting because this is something that is important because Donald Trump has an iron grip on the Republican Party. Even if he's not president, he still is the de facto leader of the Republican Party. So it is important that the Republicans who have previously kind of kept their mouths shut speak up to stop his influence before he ends up retaking control of the party in 2024. Now, just to kind of give you a quick example of the way that we've seen these disputes between both wings of the Republican Party become more public is how Dan Crenshaw has been taking on members of the Freedom Caucus. Not too long ago, he called them grifters, and he just recently took a shot at Marjorie Greene after she tried to fundraise off of her ban from Twitter. So he wrote this on Instagram, calling her out by name. Instead of playing the victim about censorship, maybe use your position as a legislator to help pass legislation against censorship. Luckily, I've already done all the hard work for you and drafted a bill that would change Section 230 to prohibit political censorship. Want a co-sponsor before I introduce it or prefer to keep up with petty and childish attacks? Your call. He adds that Marjorie scoffed at the notion of supporting anti-censorship legislation is indicative of her true intent to remain a victim. She doesn't want solutions and she doesn't care if you get censored. She just wants to be a victim so she can keep asking you for campaign donations. It's a scam. And look, obviously, I don't agree with him politically, but I do give him credit for being courageous enough to call out people in his party who are just batshit fucking insane. I mean, there's a difference between someone like Dan Crenshaw, who I vehemently disagree with ideologically and politically, and someone like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who I view as comparable to a child who... You have to scold so they don't eat glue or something like there's just there is a difference there. And I think that it would be wrong for those of us on the left to downplay that, even if when it comes to policy, there's really not that much of a difference. Um, but it goes deeper than just like these public squabbles between the trad cons and the MAGA chuds, because Donald Trump has been waging a war on members of his own party who refuse to go along with the big lie. Now, there's another condition to where he'll attack you if you're a Republican, if you voted to impeach him. But he's actually expanding the range of reasons why he might support a primary challenge against a fellow Republican. And so if you're a Republican and you're running for re-election and you haven't kissed Trump's ass thoroughly enough, He's coming after you, but one Republican in particular is standing up to him, and this individual, Larry Hogan, the governor of Maryland, is endorsing incumbent Republicans who Trump has taken aim at. So as Alex Eisenstadt of Politico explains, when Representative Jamie Herrera Butler, a Trump impeachment backer whom the former president is aggressively targeting for defeat in 2022, threw a fundraiser last month, she was accompanied by a fellow Republican who trekked from the other side of the country, Maryland Governor Larry Hogan. The foray was part of a broader effort Hogan is launching to bolster the ever-growing list of Republicans, former president. President Donald Trump is trying to oust in this year's midterm elections. Hogan has hosted fundraisers for Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, and he is looking at helping others, including Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski, another impeachment supporter facing a Trump-endorsed Republican challenger. He has loudly advocated for the Republican Governors Association to defend Kemp and other sitting incumbents under fire, a position the organization has embraced. It's crazy. We've got the former president going after all these really good elected Republicans, and so I'm trying to support people who I think deserve to be in office, Hogan said. We're trying to help people wherever we can, and I'm sure we're going to be doing a lot more of it. Now, it's not just Larry Hogan who's trying to counter the influence of Donald Trump and defend incumbent Republicans that Trump has taken aim at. It's also Mike Pence, Trump's former VP, who he is at odds with. And uh, Mike Pence has vowed to support incumbent uh, Republican governors. On top of that, he is supporting the Senate Leadership Fund, which is a super PAC directly aligned with Mitch McConnell, who Trump hates for some reason. I, I, like Mitch McConnell was the reason why Trump was able to do as much damage to the country as he did. So it, it's funny that he's seemingly mad at Mitch McConnell for acknowledging that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris won. But still, Trump 
is a petty bitch and anyone who crosses him, he's going after them. Uh, now, here's a brief rundown of some of the more high profile races where Trump has gotten involved in. So a number of races are high profile. In Alaska, Trump is backing Kelly Shabaka against Senator Lisa Murkowski. In Georgia, he is backing former Senator David Perdue against GOP Governor Brian Kemp. In Wyoming, he's backing Harriet Hagman against Representative Liz Cheney. Now, I previously hinted at the criteria Trump uses to determine whether or not he's going to get involved in a particular race and endorse a primary opponent to an incumbent Republican. Now, the two conditions usually are uh, A, they supported Trump's impeachment, or B, they refused to go along with his big lie about the 2020 election being stolen. But he's a lot more petty than that because he, he's expanding the list of reasons to go after you. So he's going after Don Bacon, not necessarily because he explicitly is an opponent to Donald Trump, but because Don Bacon dared to support uh, the certification of the election. And he's going so far as to recruit a primary challenger against Don Bacon, saying anyone wants to run for Congress against Don Bacon in Nebraska, Trump asked in a statement emailed to reporters on Monday. Bacon did not vote to impeach Trump, but did vote to certify the election results. So this is all really interesting, and I think it's it's good that the GOP is fighting. I think that it would behoove Republicans who are not pro-Trump to maybe stand up to him a little bit because, I mean, he's kind of turning your party into a clown show, and he is quite literally doing harm, demonstrable harm to our democracy. And the Republicans who are following in lockstep with him are also complicit. And that includes, ironically, someone like Brian Kemp, who didn't go along with Trump's big lie, but is making sure that he passes legislation that rigs future elections, which is fucked up. I mean, when it comes to the outcome of this GOP civil war, I mean, it's like choosing between a giant pile of shit and an even bigger pile of shit. Do you root for the anti-democracy, anti-big lie wing of the party or the anti-democracy, pro-big lie wing of the party? Both are bad, both are destructive, but one will do harm a little bit slower than the other side. So, of course, I'm rooting for Trump's side to fail, but the problem is Trump's already won. Trump is still the de facto leader of the party, as I said at the beginning of this video, and a poll conducted by Reuters and Ipsos that was recently published, uh, it shows that Trump is the leader of this party. Like, it doesn't matter what other Republicans say or do. The base is still with Donald Trump. 54% of Republicans would still support Trump in 2024, and the only one who comes close is Ron DeSantis with 11%, and Ron DeSantis is a Trump Republican. So the only positive outcome of a GOP civil war and also a Democratic Party civil war between the progressives and the right-wingers in the party would be an outright implosion of the two-party system that we currently have. Hopefully this will lead to some actual electoral reform, but I mean, I'm I'm not going to hold my breath and you shouldn't either uh, because odds are, you know, Trump is going to prevail victorious because in my opinion, I, I feel like he kind of already has. Anyone who wanted to speak up against Donald Trump, the Lindsey Grahams of the world, the Mitch McConnells of the world, they waited too long. They bit their tongue for too long. And now Donald Trump is a disease, a virus in their party, rather, and he's infected everyone. And even if they don't agree with Donald Trump, I'd say most elected Republicans probably disagree with him, um, you know, they have to shut the fuck up because you get voted out or you get targeted by Donald Trump, which can do a lot of political damage if he if he comes after you. So, you know, there's a civil war in the GOP. It's starting to really show itself, but it doesn't really matter, I think, because Trump is already the winner. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.